Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Johanna Miller with the Vermont Natural Resources Council. I'm joined here today by my uh, with my colleague Lauren Hurl, Vermont Conservation Voters, and our fantastic colleague from VPIRG, Ben Edgerly Walsh. And it is a beautiful Friday, and we are here to talk to you about the clean heat standard. Um, as you may have been following, you probably understand that the clean heat standard was the centerpiece um, recommendation coming out of the climate action plan, um, really focused on tackling uh, necessary greenhouse gas emission reductions in the thermal sector. Um, so helping you know ensure that our buildings and the way we heat um, our homes primarily um, uh, is more efficient and ultimately affordable. So it's a really exciting moment in time. Um, the legislature, especially the House Energy and Technology Committee has been digging in very deeply into this potentially transformative policy. It's really promising. It's also really critical to get it right. Um, it's a big priority of ours. If, if we can seize this moment and get this policy right, and Ben um, is gonna tell us about what that means from our perspective. And Lauren is gonna give you a quick overview of the, the help that we're gonna need from you to ensure that that is made possible. So Ben, take it away. Thanks so much, Joey. Uh, so as Joey said, the, this is a policy that has enormous potential to reduce Vermont's greenhouse gas emissions. At its core, it's the idea that just like our electric utilities already have a responsibility, to help their customers move off of fossil fuels and uh, reduce greenhouse gas emissions in Vermont. The oil, propane, you know, other fossil fuel companies that are operating in Vermont also should have that same responsibility. Uh, and really the, the thing that I wanna stress right now is uh, this is a policy that is you know, being worked on hard in the legislature and you know, very likely to move relatively soon. That's certainly our hope. Uh, and as Joey said, it's really, really important that we get this right. This is a policy that has enormous potential, but also has enough moving pieces that if it's not done carefully, uh, it uh, it could uh, move us potentially in a, in a bad direction. So what does that look like? You know, really we're talking about learning lessons from policies that we have uh, enacted in the past. I mentioned that our electric utilities already have this kind of legal responsibility, this legal obligation, very similar to what's being contemplated in a clean heat standard for fossil fuel companies. And there are a few things that we have learned over the years uh, from our renewable energy policy in the electric space. Number one, it's really important to have transparent, accurate life cycle greenhouse gas emissions accounting that we really have a clear sense of the carbon pollution being created by a particular activity, and that's what the policy is being based on. Uh, two, and very similar, that there's no sort of double counting, that there's no uh, emissions reductions that are being counted in one place and another place, and ultimately making it harder for us to hit the greenhouse gas requirements in the Global Warming Solutions Act. Um, and then number three, and I, I can't stress this enough, and this is a, a, an area where the committee is you know, working very hard to get it right, this needs to be a policy that advances a just transition that really uh, works for low and moderate income Vermonters and speeds the transition, especially for low and moderate income Vermonters to cleaner, more affordable heating sources. So those are kind of three core pillars of how we're approaching this policy. Uh, and uh, again, just to really stress, this is a, a policy that could really transform the heating sector in Vermont. And set us on a, a really good path to hitting our climate targets, hitting the targets that were put in statute under the Global Warming Solutions Act. So we're really excited this is being, we worked so diligently on. I wanna turn it over to Lauren to talk a little bit more about what you can do right now to, to help this policy move and uh, move in uh, uh, you know, shape that really moves around in the right direction. Great, thank you so much for that overview. Yes, we are both excited about the potential of this policy and um, you know, every week we wanna give you a, a call to action, a way you can get involved and really focusing in on this priority issue this week. Um, to us, we are thinking of it as two prongs. If you happen to live in a district where you have a representative who is serving on the House Energy and Technology Committee, and we can put that list in uh, the link, a link to the chat so that you can 
figure out if you have one of those folks, if you don't already know. Um, for them, we really want to thank them for working hard on this. They have been, you know, slogging through the details and really uh, a lot of hard work in trying to get this right. And, um, you know, hitting on those core points that Ben and Joey just laid out, you know, making sure that we have transparent greenhouse gas accounting, no double counting of emissions reductions, and prioritizing a just transition. So we're helping all Vermonters at all income levels and in all parts of the state make this transition to clean heating solutions. Um, so, you know, hitting on those core points is great. If you have a representative who is not on the House Energy and Technology Committee, we're still getting to the moment where it would be great to just reach out and say, this is a really core priority of uh, moving forward the climate action plan and hope to have your support on, um, you know, on a clean heat standard uh, that is well-crafted and is going to um, advance our obligations and our opportunities in transitioning to clean energy. So we'll put a little more info uh, in the uh, links to you so that you can figure out the details, um, but reaching out right now is critically important because people need to start hearing that Vermonters support this and we know uh, you all are following this all closely. Uh, so we're gonna let you get to it, um, but hope you all have a great weekend. Thank you, Ben and Joey for your great overviews as always. And we'll be back with you next week uh, with more. So stay tuned. Talk to you all next week, bye.